Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. This is Cinema Talk, the official podcast of RuleThirds.com. And yes, I did just reuse uh, the intro for when I last hosted, but that's okay, because now it's going to be my thing. This time, this episode, we're talking about twists, movie twists, when they work, when they don't, and we've got some lovely examples to discuss. Of course, we will be giving fair warning, you know, for the movie we're talking about, because we don't want to spoil anything for anyone, so keep an eye and ear out for that. But enough of this setup. My name is Sean. I'm Larry. And I'm Max. Or am I? Oh, dun, man. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man, you got And this is Cinema Talk. Let's lobby, lobby segue. Go. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. So, guys, what I meant was let's ride segues to the lobby. Uh, they are very trendy. They're the vehicles yeah. of the future. Okay, I got you. Anyway, thank you for joining us, audience, uh, for Cinema Talk. Before we get going into the you know, topic, we're going to talk what's been on the site. Now, there's been a lot. Uh, we kind of forgot to mention it the last Cinema Talk, so we got to do quite a bit of catch-up. So, we have a greats from Larry on Danny Elfman. We've got a new preview from me on the second Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. We did a nice little compilation of our favorite... Uh, reviews with brevity in nice video form and some cool soundtrack to go with it. I did a written review of Maleficent, which has been very people hate it or love it. Uh, you'll see where I fall. And then, of course, we all did a review of X Men Days of Future Past, which was followed up the next uh, Saturday after that with a recommendation domination from Larry of X Men Days of Future Past. So now that's all out of the way, go check it out for sure. I think it's all wonderful. And uh, let's get to the topic twists. Um, we could start with just talk about twists in general, but we all have examples of twists we want to discuss. Uh, I think two-ish. And I think all of our points will come up uh, when we talk about these examples. So I say we get right into it. So, Larry, mm. what is your first twist? But first, tell us what movie it is so we can give people fair spoiler warning. All right. I'm going to be choosing a classic one here. Uh, my first choice is on The Sixth Sense. Mm. So, That's like the definitive twist nowadays, yes, mm -hmm. it exactly. seems. I, I just want... Especially because it's Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah and exactly. that Shyamalan was defined by this twist. People exactly. just always make jokes. It's all the twist. <laughs> yeah. What a twist. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about The Sixth Sense. Spoiler warning is official. Um, all right. The essential twist is the kid really does see dead people. In fact, he sees mm -hmm. dead people so well that the main character is revealed to actually be dead. Yes, uh, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis is, is dead. Character. That's yes. the classic yeah, yes. sentence to spoil it. Bruce Willis is dead. Yeah, Bruce Willis, he, he dead. Um, and the reason I want to talk about this twist and why I think it's so brilliant is because I think the best twist, and this might be really obvious, but the best twists, in my opinion, are the ones that do have subtle buildup, but they're not obvious. Well, yeah, you, it's all about the subtlety. Right. And I, it's also nice, like... It's fun when you look back on a movie. It's like, oh, how could it be so stupid? Of course. Like, it all adds up, but at the time you didn't see it. And that's the case with The Sixth Sense. Exactly. Um, like, it's all there. You yeah, just don't think to put it together. There. It's well done. Because a lot of movies I see, even past and present, they, they try to have very, very blatant hints that, hey, guy, hey guys, there's this twist happening. It, it's coming. You're gonna, it's it's going to be great. Is. It's going to be great. Oh, my. Like, literally. Is it cinnamon they, flavored? <laughs> Oh, Matt, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so anyway. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I feel the sixth sense was just so I, revolutionary. I guess it was kind of revolutionary, you know, as far as twists go, because it was just such a good twist. Yes, uh, very famous. Yeah, it yeah. was just so like, it wasn't necessarily out of the blue, but it was just so like, wow, this changes the entire way I look at the movie. Uh, and especially now when you look at that twist and then you see how Shyamalan's been trying to recreate it and has failed <sighs> utterly. He, he's failed at everything. You yeah. know, we should do a podcast on Shyamalan. Just go yeah. through each of his movies. I mean, I could talk about the different twists at length, but I won't. But, no, I, no, I mean, Sixth yeah, Sense. <laughs> yeah, but the Sixth Sense, in my opinion, is just, it is, as you said, it is the definitive twist. It came at the perfect time. It had perfectly subtle hinting. And uh, when you look back, it all makes complete uh, sense. No plot holes. Brilliant. Indeed. Okay, Max. So, end spoiler for The Sixth Sense. Max, what movie will you be discussing? Um, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite movies, uh, David Fincher's Fight Club. 
Okay, so um, spoiler for Fight Club. Yeah. Luckily, we're, these both are pretty old movies, so I'm pretty sure you know the twist. Like, I haven't seen Fight Club, but I know the twist. You know, it's, it's one of those things. But spoiler for Fight Club. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, I watched this a few years ago. I didn't know the twist. All I knew was that there was going to be a twist. And, um, like, with as Will Larry was saying, I think the best twists are the ones that completely change your viewpoint on the film and mm-hmm. also are backed up by the evidence that is supplied throughout the course of the narrative. It's not sure, just they're like, very similar in that way. Yeah, it, it's not just well. There well, are bad the twists, twist? which, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, I, and Fight Club's twist changed everything. And yeah, what is the twist? To clarify for people that haven't seen it, I don't care. <laughs> so the twist in Fight Club is um, well, the story centers around two individuals, the relationship between these two individuals, uh, the main character, the unnamed main character, played by Edward Norton, and um, Tyler Durden, played by Brad Pitt. Now Tyler Durden. Now, the main character meets Tyler Durden at the very beginning, and they build a relationship as it goes through, as, like, this huge operation expands, and they start these fight clubs, and it just, it, it blows up, Sean, it's, it's huge. And the big twist at the end is that Tyler Durden is just a manifestation of Edward Norton's mind, basically. Yes, he just he made him exist. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, all Brilliant. the things that, that Tyler Durden did, he did. Like, there was, like, the first... The Fight Club begins with, like, them beating each other up, and it's like, oh, man, we should do a club over that. As it turns out, he was just actually literally beating himself up. <laughs> like, well, literally. See, I haven't seen the movie, but... Yeah, no, no, yeah. you see it in the movie. Like, it's... You right, just I see seen him... the movie, so that's pretty amusing. Yeah, so it's... I love that twist because it changes everything, and it's totally, like, justified. Yeah. Like, all the... Yeah, all the points, all the story points, like, are totally covered... By this twist, it's not just come out of nowhere, like bad twists, like what we'll talk about later. But like these, sure. like it just it changed. It was a paradigm shift. It literally just changed everything. And you can tell that this this is I don't know you know whether it has to do with Fight Club or not. But this twist has done a lot, like a lot. I think Fight Club is one of the movies that actually gets this right, as it a lot of evidence is built around it and it actually has something to say about the character and his like area, other than oh he's just crazy. So yeah, that twist yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I like to think cool. of it as kind of Tyler Durden is this unnamed main character. Well, he is Tyler Durden. So, I mean, I like to think of it as he, he kind of has a split personality. Yeah. And that's how, and Tyler Durden is the manifestation of his crazier oh, side. Oh, and should I tell you how he like, how he gets rid of Tyler Durden, Sean? Should I tell you? Well, sure, because I know the ending. Yeah, he shoots himself in the cheek. That's just uh, like... Son of a... I remember that moment. But I yeah, that was like, oh my God. It was, And the weird thing is... To just to kill him, he had to just, like, shoot... It, it looked like he was shooting himself in the head when he was... It's really weird. I don't know if that thing fits together. But, but yeah, Fight Club, great twist. Next. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. End spoilers on Fight Club. Begin spoilers on one of my favorites from one of my favorite directors, oh. Memento. So, again, mm. spoiler Christopher alert Nolan. I feel like we're going to be talking about him a bit on this podcast. Oh, uh, boy. Here yeah, we go. this is the first time we've, we've I think we've explicitly been, talked about one of his films, though. Yeah. Um, so, Memento. If you don't know, I mean, if you don't care about spoilers, you really should. Please yeah. stop listening. Memento's one of the most ambitious movie. films like, the, it, of the last it's like, 25 amazing. years. And it works. That's what's so great. Mm-hmm. Love it. Anyway, the gimmick is that it's told in reverse. Obviously, like I, we've all seen it. We know that. Uh, the main character has can't form new memories so he forgets what hap- what's happening you know a few minutes after it happens like it just fades away and so the film is structured backwards so the audience is just as lost as him when things are already in motion we have no idea why or where he is it's brilliantly structured just a brilliant th- really like thought like people put a lot of thought into it like it had to be really well thought out and the twist of course at the end is well okay wow <laughs> a little bit of backstory he keeps talking about Sammy Jenkins this guy who he was investigating with the same condition that he thought was faking his wife to as like a final test made him do this insulin shot over and over because you know if he wasn't faking he'd remember he already gave it it ends up putting her in a coma and killing her and the twist at the end of the film is that it, there is no Sammy Jenkins it was him and his wife who he keeps saying was killed by some robbers during a home assault so of course the twist is she survived that, and he, with his condition, ended up uh, killing her. That is dark. Yeah, that it's guy, very this dark. Guy is crazy. So, yes, why I love the twist so much, and it's this is also this is a theme that comes up in my second example as well. But we'll get to that later. It's that there's no way 
to really know that the twist is coming in terms of the movie, like hints it gives you, but that's part of the thing. Like, there's no way to know these things have happened because we're following someone who has no memory of what just happened, and we haven't seen it yet. We're working backwards. Yeah, Sean, so, like, tell the, me, the, how, how is this film structured exactly? I already said that. Oh, you did? Sorry. Yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> it's backwards, so the, the end of the movie is the first scene. I guess I, I just have steer. short-term memory loss. Uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> well, well, uh, well played to work that in. So, yeah. Oh, uh, anyway, I love that the structure of the film makes it impossible because he doesn't know. He did it, right? Yeah. yeah from, like, from it's, it's brilliant. There's no way for us oh, to know. Yeah, but it, it adds up. It's not like it was hinted at necessarily, but it adds up, and that's what's crucial. It doesn't feel unjustified, even if they weren't really dropping subtle hints anywhere along the line. Yeah. You know, I, I, from what I remember watching this film, it, it seemed like it was sort of built on not twists, but like sort of like new areas to think every yes. like every chance it went back it was kind of a movie not built on twists but built on the foundation of twists and right, then it was, when it actually did it it was like oh damn oh, yeah cuz oh, every damn. scene every scene revealed something that like oh that's why that previous scene happened you know cuz something will lead into the one you just saw so yeah that is kind of the same idea of a twist as a clarification and twists are really good at that sometimes where it's like oh of course like then it all adds up so, yeah, I get what you're saying. The foundation of twists, yeah. Larry, do you have anything? Um, I mean... Memento? I just, I think that Memento, it, it just so brilliantly wraps this twist into actual filmmaking standards. Like, to pull this twist off, they literally had to, like, restructure the entire movie. Like, they have to change yeah. the way they actually made the film. And and I've never seen a yeah, film that exactly. goes backwards. There I think this not, is really the only... Well, yeah, I mean, not just that. Okay. The only prolific like, one, at least. Yeah, there's yeah. not many movies that actually literally embed their twist into their style of filmmaking and into the ways well, that they more actually more narrative. Make the film. Style of narrative, not filmmaking, but well, yeah, narrative. you know what I mean. It's like, yeah, and it's, it's a great point. It yeah, is. It's like the movie is centered around the twist rather than it's just kind of thrown at the end like oh look you see you know it's like it's, Funny. they make it around it yeah that's actually that will also come up in my second example I, I, that's why i picked these two not only do i love them but they share these features so anything else to say about memento no i'm good okay so end spoiler on memento guy pierce is awesome that's not a spoiler that's just something you should know <laughs> and uh let's move back to larry for your second example what movie you're talking about all right, I'm going to be talking about um, Planet of the Apes. Classic. Spoiler for Planet of the Apes, but seriously, guys, how can you it's not twist, know the it's twist? It's like the most mem remembered thing about the movie. Well, you maniacs! Well, you blow it up! Well, anyway. I wouldn't say the twist is the most memorable part about the movie, for better or for worse, but... No, it absolutely is. I don't remember anything else about that movie. It's well, kind of bland. Well, besides Those Charles... damn besides shots Charles fired. Heston. Shots besides, fired. Besides the interesting makeup in Charlton Heston, but... Oh, that movie's yes. awesome. Yes, um, interesting makeup. Good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, interesting makeup. Well, okay, it was back then. You, you, you okay, let's move really, on. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I'm uh, fine with Planet of the Apes. Right, so Planet of the Apes, the huge twist is that this weird... Plan well, I mean, the entire idea is that the astronaut... Uh, the astronaut that was the main character, Charlton Heston, um, he somehow crash lands on this planet... He doesn't really mm -hmm. doesn't really know what's going on. Like, what, am I am I just on a weird planet? Some weird. But it turns out that planet is actually Earth. <laughs> Somehow, he's traveled like thirty three years into the future. No, I'm sorry, what? not thirty three. Sorry, not thirty three. Whoa, whoa, hundreds whoa, of years into the future. Oh, come on, come on. I was <laughs> hundreds, reading no, thousands. See, I was, see, I have the article that I remember the twist from. And it's just going through a bit. And it said 33, to 33 years Tim Burton would make the remake, which we don't like to discuss. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> anyway, but he travels years into the future to find that Earth is just like this, this it's just run rampant with apes now. Yep. That's how it works. Humans killed each other off and the apes rose as the dominant species. And exactly. it's all James Franco's fault. It is all James Franco's <laughs> fault. Now we know. Now we know the real enemy now people. We know. Everyone, James Franco. He blew it all up. You blew you it up. You maniac. <laughs> you maniac. Um, 
But the reason I wanted to bring can up we this start like hashtag James Franco you maniac? Like, can we get that a thing? James Fran- Just to send it, James Franco. Franco. Spread, it, spread it like wildfire. <laughs> James Franco, go on to you, Cinematalk listeners. Uh, the two Twitter. of you. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh, the reason I want to bring up this twist is because I think the execution of it, just how we figure it out, is really well done. Uh, he's he's sailing off, you know. Well, he's riding a horse on the beach. Well, right. You know. Well, I mean, he's going to sail off. Right. He's going to sail off. Sorry, uh, I'll stop interrupting. And it's fine. Uh, I haven't seen the movie in a while, but the twist sticks with me. Um, and, ah, see, right there, most well, memorable yes, part. Yes, but so does Charles Heston and the funny makeup. All right, so you you see that a piece of the Statue of Liberty, or perhaps the, I don't think the Statue of Liberty. Pretty much actually, the entirety of it, only it's like super demolished and blown up. Oh uh, yeah, is it? At, do you think it was actually like literally in the ground, or do you think it was? It just was, piece? yes. Yeah. Was in the ground? Well, okay. no, or is it just a piece of the Statue of Liberty, or is the whole thing? Yeah, I was thinking I the whole know. thing was in the ground. That's what I assumed. I've always wondered that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is it just, just did, did, did the earth just, like, grow a few feet, like, hot, like bigger in these last few hundred years? Like, to the yeah. point where it just, yeah. Anyway. It but, happens. Uh, it happens. So, yeah, he sees uh, the Statue of Liberty, and that's when it all clicks that he's on Earth. And I think that is a very, it's a, it's a very simplistic, but it's a very good use of imagery and show don't tell. Of course, yeah. he eventually goes, I also, oh, maniac, but you know. Yo, blow it mm-hmm. It's all um, visual storytelling. Yes, visual. but what I really like this twist is not only is it really memorable, and, like, Charles Heston's performance in that scene is really over the top, but it's appropriate and really gr- a great scene. I love it because, this sounds weird, but it is scientifically accurate. Like, that is completely 100% possible to, because we've confirmed it. We've done it. We've already done it. If you travel really quickly, time is a little slower for you. So the concept that he shoots off at this insane speed for maybe, what, like a year for him wakes up and it's been tens of thousands on Earth. That's a thing. You know, we've put atomic clocks on an airplane, flown around the world a few times, and it's actually a few milliseconds behind. We've proven this is possible. So I've always liked that it seems so outlandish, like, oh, this planet's overrun by apes. But it actually adds up. This this could happen. Someone could get stuck out in this, you know, speed loop and come back down way later than anticipated. It's brilliant. Again, everything makes sense. It's Science. An important twist thing. If your yes. twists don't make sense, it ain't a good twist. No, that doesn't mean it has to be scientifically accurate. Well, but, I mean, it just yeah. has to make sense in the, in the terms of the movie. Yes. Because, I mean, of course, Planet of the Apes is just a super hardcore sci-fi movie like it's just so realistic and uh, yeah that makeup though <laughs> yes so anything to add on that max well yeah it's it's a great twist i mean I, you know for some of these i wish i didn't know them before i watched the movie yeah that's always like, a thing. like me and darth vader again but like, you're Alana. thinking back on this like what if you were like an audience member in 1964 whenever the movie came out and like you saw that and you're like oh my god these yeah. days that scene is one of the most famous of the entire movie so everybody knows Parody that scene it's my same problem with Psycho everybody knows the big twist of Psycho but it's like, true yeah and so it's like you know what like the whole twist situation for classic movies is kind of difficult but still it's, it's, it's a, it, is, it is quite a scene quite a scene okay and spoiler on Planet of the Apes and I'm gonna go next with my final pick so begin spoiler Spoiler alert on The Usual Suspects, one of my Uh, all-time favorites. Of course, the whole film is based around a job on a boat gone horribly wrong. Everyone's dead. They need to know what is going on. The name Kaiser Soze comes up. This infamous crime lord that probably doesn't exist might just be a a story, a legend. And so you get told this story of what led these characters to the boat job that goes horribly wrong through Kevin Spacey brilliant performance his character and of course the twist at the end Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Soze it's a wonderfully delivered twist and like okay I love it first to start I love I love Kevin Spacey in general he does an amazing performance here as Verbal Kent it's the name he has just this pathetic um yeah he's just not a strong person like he's just kind of a coward in a lot of aspects and uh, what, what's the word he uses? Yeah, like they say it in the movie. He's he's stupid and weak and pathetic, and that's kind of his thing. But then, of course, it's revealed at the end. It's all a guise. You know, it's his. It's a disguise. Um, so I love how it's revealed too. How this whole time he's telling like these little brief anecdotes and he's doing all these things. And when the 
you know, the detective looks on the wall. He sees all the pieces. He just grabbed it off the wall. He just grabbed, like, the name Redfoot. He grabbed uh, Barbershop Quartet in Skokie, Illinois. And so it's, it conf- like, as he sees all these pieces, it slowly becomes clear to the audience and to the character that he made all of this up. And that's what's so brilliant. It slowly, slowly unravels. Also, it gives us the great expression, Kaiser Sozane, you know, where you <laughs> make stuff up by looking around your environment. And then, of course, why I love this twist, just like Memento, the film makes it impossible to see it coming just in terms of how it's set up. Again, the film is told by verbal. He's explaining to this uh, detective what happened, like what events brought them to the ship. So, there's a problem there, isn't there? The person telling the story is the bad guy. So we get an unreliable narrator, I and it's love, a brilliant yeah, technique. Yes, I so love we don't technique. know we don't know what actually happened. Some things kind of had to happen, as he said, like as we've seen, but a lot of it didn't happen. Like there's a shot where it shows Kevin Spacey watch Keaton, one of the characters, be shot, and of course we know that didn't happen. He shot Keaton. He was on the ship. He killed everyone on the ship and shot Keaton. So I just love how you can't see the twist coming because. The guy telling you doesn't want you to know the twist because he's trying to get away with murder. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> multiple. Multiple murders. And multiple. so it's just... Yeah, it, it's it's brilliant because it's... Yeah, we're along for the ride just like the character. Who is it the main character? Spacey's arguably the main character, but the detective is kind of our little like point of view person. You know, we're along with the ride with him. So we try and piece together what actually happened, but we have we have fraudulent data. We can't figure it out because we don't have the truth. It's wonderful. I've blathered on enough about the usual suspects. Take um, it away, you two. Go. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that the twist of Kaiser Soze, uh, with Kevin Spacey's character, uh, was really the first time I ever experienced the unreliable uh, narrator. Uh, yes, and I haven't seen it too much. Uh, no, you don't see it too well. I've seen it a couple times. I want to see it more. I want to uh, see it more. We actually saw... Hollywood, we, take note. Yeah, we saw a little bit of it in Wolf of Wall Street uh, from last year. Uh, we also, I also have seen a couple other movies that use unreliable narrator. And the reason that that, that technique works so well because the narrator is supposed to be our – he is supposed to be our um, surrogate. Surrogate. That, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's, uh, that. that's a good word, that. yes. Me and Max are on the same page here. All right. Uh, he's our surrogate for the story. So it's kind of as if you're using a surrogate that's not yours. Right, yeah. you feel like I felt betrayed by Kevin Spacey. Yeah, seriously. Like, I trusted yeah. you, man. You you were telling me this story. I was into it, and then you were lying. Yeah, you were lying. Like I remember, there's I just I, there's this one specific scene. I was reading some reviews about Wolf of Wall Street, and there's this one specific scene. I don't want to. I don't like to trail other movies, but it's just it's a perfect unreliable narrator moment. Right in the beginning of Wolf of Wall Street, he's like, I was driving down in a in like a red car. Went, wait, maybe it was white. What? No, 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 hold on, Larry, I gotta stop you, because that's not accurate. What do you mean? In the movie, he goes, like, and I was driving, like, he doesn't mention that he's driving a nice car, he was seeing that he's riding a, a red car, he's, and he goes, no, no, my, my car was white, like in Miami Vice or whatever, not red. Yeah, okay, the thing sorry. about the misleading narrator is that it kind of has to be intentional. You mm-hmm. know, like, we were being told the story intentionally to make sure that we could not put the pieces together. Right, because he didn't want us to the detective to. So in that case, it's more like he just can't remember, which could be a thing. Like Memento, uh, he can't remember what just happened. So I know, yeah, but he's I also kinda, unreliable. I know he's but, more I mean, unreliable as his point of view, not yes. a necessarily a narrator. But I guess so. But I mean, the, I mean, Jordan Belfort is the narrator in the film. So that mm-hmm. moment for me, as I was reading reviews and I kind of recalled, I'm like, hmm, it's kind of a good thing to think about. Kind of adds a deeper layer to the movie and after you figure out the twist it, for anybody who's seen the usual suspects um it's a good exercise to just as a film just in filmmaking in general to see all the different things if you watch the movie once and you figure out the twist and then watch it again and just see all the little things that the film does to perfectly collide with that twist it's mm-hmm. just there's so much attention to detail so much polish Especially on the part of Spacey, uh, it, it just all meshes together so well, and uh, I just I really admire the film for that. Yeah, I love love the movie. Oh, yeah, so, Max, great. do you have anything more on Usual Suspects? Um, not really. No. All right. So there we go. And spoiler. 
alert on usual suspects. And now we move to Max, his final pick. What movie is it? Well, see, I actually want to go a different angle. I want to talk about a twist that's bad. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Variety. <laughs> yeah, variety. One sixth equals variety. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I, and I want to talk about this twist specifically because it highlights everything that I find wrong with bad twists. Like, it highlights Ooh, a lot of it. Okay. Um, this is not to speak in the entire movie, just the twist. I'm talking about a the twist in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't that great. Yeah, Look, see, I mean, now, I like the movie very much, but yeah, yeah the twist up. itself. Just as, okay, okay, okay. For, for those who don't know, The Dark Knight Rises is... Well, oh, sorry, begin spoiler for Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Man, this is, like, it's, it's kind of complicated to explain, but essentially Bruce Wayne, he, he's with, he meets this uh, this woman, this, this environmentalist, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and like she's really nice and she's really cool and then he's got to fight Bane and we all, and there's a point where we all think that Bane actually escaped from uh, Bane escaped from a thing that man this is really complicated Sean help me out here okay <clears throat> Batman Bruce Wayne meets Talia Al Ghul except she's totally not Talia Al Ghul just don't worry about it and <laughs> she's you know there throughout the story you hear Bane like there's Batman hears about this child who escaped this terrible prison, and he's like, and he's oh, like, oh it's gotta be Bane. It's it's totally Bane, you guys. And then totally it turns Bane. out, oh, snap, yeah, it's it turns the lady out, yeah, who's Talia Al Ghul, and the thing who is, turns out see, to be the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, yeah. Liam Neeson. You know, bringing us back to the first movie. See, the yes. thing that drives me nuts, like, the best ones are the ones that, like, are built on evidence that are still, like, shocking to you and, like, change your second, third, whatever viewing. This the worst twists are the ones that are literally like that you can't see coming and are just made for audience visceral thrill. The sake of a twist for the sake of a twist. Like that's what it is. It's like the sake of like twist for the sake of twist. And I feel mm -hmm. like there I you know, apparently there are very, very subtle hints for comic book fans to figure out, but I Well yeah. Th well that's kind of the problem with the example of the Dark Knight Rise. It's like I I'm glad you brought this up because it isn't a very good twist and it is just there for twist's sake. But in this case, everyone who knew the comics knew that she was Talia Al Ghul. Like it was super obvious. Yeah, <laughs> so seriously. But for an audience member Oh shut up. Wow. For an audience member like me, who did not know about Batman. Right, exactly. It was still it like it just well I could not see that coming. There was no, like you know, even but not in a good way. You know, yeah. that's what's important. Like not being able to see it coming is great. I did not see it coming in the usual suspects, right? Yeah. But yeah, if it's in a bad way, like it doesn't make sense, then it's a then it's a bad the twist. The thing is, I don't know if it doesn't make sense. It's just like I it doesn't like and it also doesn't really change my uh, It doesn't feel earned. Yeah, it doesn't feel yes, that's a yeah, great that's way to put it, John. It just twist. it doesn't feel earned. I because, can't, you know. With, the thing with narrative is like you're, you're just kind of you're along with the ride. You're trusting the story. Yeah, you've got you're your expectations. The it's building expectations. So when it does a 180 and kind of betrays you, it can be the best moment of the film. Most cases, it's brilliant. Most twists are done well, I think, that I've yeah. seen. But if it's done badly, you feel like it just kind of ruined itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just it's like you know you gotta be along for the ride. But movie movies gotta earn that shit. It's gotta earn yeah, the twist. They do definitely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in, in that same regard, I mean, I guess. It's a complicated twist, and I, you know, it did give a visceral reaction, but it just seemed like out of, like almost kind of out of nowhere, like just when you think he's actually oh, yeah, gonna definitely. get it, and then yeah, it's no, no of course Talia. not. He yeah. can't win at the first try. Well, no, he. Well, this is actually the second try, and then he does. Yeah, well, you can't like win at the first try because he breaks his back. You can't win the second try because Talia Al Ghul. You, you uh, win the first try, the third. And there try, was no but. third try because Anne Hathaway just yeah. owns. Third, third time's the charm. But yeah, that's my example of a bad twist. Time. Do you guys, do you guys know any bad twists? Anything? I know oh, some man. bad twists. Okay, well, really, okay. End spoiler on Dark Knight Rises. Larry, just talk about a few really quick. All right, I'll well, try and think of one. Well, I could go through half of them that John Malone's library. Um, yeah. Cop, cop, village. Um, but. Uh, I think one of the worst twists I've seen in recent memory was for a film that came out, I think it was last year, it's called Now You See Me. Hmm. Uh, uh, Max and I reviewed it for uh, back when we did Cinematac. Oh, yeah. Uh, Classic. And, um, <laughs> the, movie, the movie was actually going really well. Like, I actually was really enjoying myself. And the movie's constantly building up. It's like it's about these four magicians, and obviously when you have some like magician, like magicians and magic going on, you obviously know something weird going on. Especially yeah, the advertising pretty much can. The yeah. advertising pretty much guaranteed. Like they were kind of telling the audience that there was going to be a twist. Yeah, something crazy's happening, and like the whole movie unravels, kind of like a Sherlock Holmes mystery, where you kind of have to note all the different little details that these guys pull off, and it's really stimulating. And to an extent, it almost feels like they earn. 
this this twist, you know? Like, oh man, this is going to be big. And then it turns out that the whole twist is that they pull a Kaiser Soze, sort of. Um, the person who was trying to do those illusionists in, because well, they were really doing crime, the whole time was in on the whole thing. Hmm. Um, he, like... Ever since, like, ever since, like, his father got into this whole, like, issue with those illusionists or whatnot and magic and crap, he was in it the whole time. And the moment that twist happened, I immediately lost it. Like, that... Weak. Yeah. It was so... Not only was it weak, just it wasn't creative. It made absolutely zero sense. I... Okay, for twists, it's okay to, like, you know, have that uh, suspension of disbelief, you know, for uh, some maybe one or two points. Literally none of the explanation they try to give makes any logical sense. And it's even worse when you're thinking about this movie, which is based off of illusions and the logic behind illusions. And it, it was just, oh you know, it shattered, it shattered the illusion. To, to, for, yeah. No pun intended. See, that reminds me, I have two really quick, like, things that were trying to be twists. The first, uh, Prometheus had a, quite a few just stupid Ugh. plot points that I could yeah. tell were trying to be twists. That's such a disappointing movie in general. I mean, yeah, seriously. I can go into specifics, but you know, if you've seen Prometheus, you know that there are just some things where, like, oh, that should be shocking. I'm like, I don't care enough to be shocked. Yep, I don't care. <laughs> um, it's like, oh, that character is someone's father. I could not care less. <laughs> um, and the second one, which I hate, that's kind of a that was like a quasi twist, is Ocean's Twelve. I hate that movie because it is garbage, especially compared to how amazing Ocean's Eleven is, and Ocean's Thirteen is good. But basically, you know, they're heist movies, so you want to figure out how how they pulled this off. And so they do this big heist job. You're watching this unfold. But the guy gets the diamond or whatever he's going after. You know, their competitor gets the thing before them. And then the ending, it's revealed that, no, they actually switched it out before it even got to the place. It's like, so why did we watch the movie? There yes. was no reason to watch the movie. It was so such a bad twist, such a bad movie. Oh, my God. Ugh. That sounds so stupid. Oh, yeah. Don't watch Ocean's 12. It's awful. No, I, I, ne- I watched Ocean's 11. 12. I never saw 12 So great. 13. Ocean's yeah. Eleven's great. Ocean's yeah. Thirteen is pretty good. It's good. Okay. So, uh, Maybe but I'll not watch twelve. 13. Do I wait? Do I have to watch twelve to get thirteen? No, okay, no. Because I don't want. I don't want. No, they you forgot know, about Ocean's Twelve's existence. You know, it's interesting. Uh, just kind of going on on a different track. Just going on like how the productions handle twists. Do you guys know about this? Like there are two yeah, in that's... mind that make me think about like how twists are handled by the filmmakers. Like the first one is Psycho. Now Psycho is one of the most like famous horror movies of all time. And the thing is, when that movie came out. Alfred Hitchcock asked, or he demanded that movie theaters not let anybody in until, like, you know, once the movie had began. This is because he had based the marketing around around 50, like, the first, I don't know, fourth of the movie centered on a different character. And right. all of a sudden, it completely turns, and, like, it is, like, it's the big, it's probably, you know, like, even today, it's not really that well-known, but it's one of the biggest twists in history because it was a complete, like... Based on its marketing, it was completely different from what everybody saw. The other example right. being uh, The Empire Strikes Back, which I'm surprised we haven't mentioned uh, here. because it has, I wanted to, but it's kind of so cliche. I felt like I should talk about something less now. Well, yeah. Well, the it. thing is, they weren't told that twist until right when he was about to deliver the line. Yeah, right there. That's and like, brilliant. And apparently, like, and like Mark Hamill was like, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> ri- what? Like, they were all, like, everybody on the crew. Nobody, like... I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the original actor who did Darth Vader, not not James Earl Jones, but the guy who was in the suit, he was told something different, and then they like told him actually it's uh, this, and they're like, oh what? Like, and that's so <laughs> I wish cool it was how they did that. Like, would have been fun. That's how you handle a twist like that, I think, because it, that kind of shock value. Like, I don't normally like shock value in a lot of movies, especially horror movies, but that kind of thing involved with the production is like extra detail. I don't yeah, know, do you that's guys interesting to read about. Like, production-wise, no. Like, sometimes there are surprises, but I can't think of any specific, like, twists they try and hide. Well, I mean, the closest I can come to is not actually a movie, it's a show. Uh, on How I Met Your Mother... Uh, oh. the, 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 Sorry. Uh, uh, you just always bring it up, okay? Uh, well, and that is not at well, all hypocritical not for me to podcast. scoff. Not on this podcast. I barely bring it up in this podcast. That's true. Uh, so, okay, invalid argument. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, in the show, they never, the, none of the production crew, obviously, How I Met Your Mother's centered around the main character, and we're waiting to see who the mother is. That's the whole, that was what the whole last season was building up to. Um, and no, none of the crew knew who the mother would be, nor did they know any of the scenes 
where the real character would be. Like, whenever they had script readings, they were, like, they would disguise the script readings as, like, terrible, like, college, like, student student films in college. Whoa, what? Yeah, they would do that, and they would have closed script readings where nobody knew except, like, Carter Bates, Craig Thomas, the creators of the show, and, like, Josh Radner, who is uh, the, main, the main character of the show. And that is... I totally admire that. Just keeping it so secret. And even yeah, the production dedication. crew is on the ride with us, which is great. Cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I think what so, we take away from this is that the twist is a very valuable thing. and Yes, like, it is. And it can be done so well. It can be the highlight of your film. Oh, it and can. And it can increase, like... And, not, and that doesn't just speak well the, ill of the rest of the film. Like, I was loving The Usual Suspects, but then when the twist happened at the end, it just elevated the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, but it has to be thought out. It like, has again, to be, We yeah. talked about Shyamalan. We started with Shyamalan. Let's end with Shyamalan. He doesn't, like, his movies have gotten way worse, okay? It's not controversial to say that. It's not as well thought out. No one likes his twists anymore. I you think know? it's because he understands the value of the twist, and he just really wants to capture that feeling again, but, you know, it's it's going to mean not, something. Yeah. As, as exactly. we go back to the value of a character, the value of storytelling devices, like the twist, are extremely important. I mean, yeah. this is just like some like, guy okay. mouthing off. I just want to yeah. go off real quick. I want to bring up a sh- another Shyamalan example. Um, spoilers for Devil. I want to talk about Devil a little bit because this is this was, and this is really like this was when I was done with Shyamalan. This was like the last Airbender got me pissed off at Shyamalan. I was just done with his like work when he was adapting something. Like never adapt anything. This was like original, so I was like, okay, fine. But the twist in that movie: uh, five people on an elevator. Apparently, the devil is is inside. And, okay, by the end, four of the characters are dead. So, clearly you think, okay, no, fine, none of them are the devil, whatever. So, oh, no, the devil's supernatural now, blah, 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 blah. And then one of the four characters, one of the four characters is really the devil the whole time, comes back. And not only was I kind of waiting for that to happen, the weight of it just wasn't there for me. Yeah. Because, it's, first of all, it's not as creative. It's not that creative. Like considering you already established that the devil is supernatural, so to have yeah, where are you going to go from there? You've yeah, already seriously. gone. Yeah, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, what to bring it back as a human completely contradicts everything you said. But the worst part is that the execution of the twist is so dumb. Do you expect me to take a twist seriously where the devil comes back as like a, a 79 year old lady? Yeah, just this old oh lady. My like, God, no. it was so. It's so, so it's elderly so are the devil. Am I right, guys? Am I right? What? Uh, Elders are the devil. Am I right, guys? <laughs> oh my god! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. On that high note, do we have any like closing comments? Like all I'd uh, want to say is, you gotta think it out. Yeah. Don't just put a twist in because they're popular. It can really, really backfire. Honestly, uh, I think a lot of like gr- like I think a lot of twists. I don't know if they're good or bad. Are, are some they're sometimes just like the movies are built around them. Like something somebody comes yes. up with a great idea and like I want to make a movie that leads up to that. So yeah. I mean, but I don't know if that if they're a good twist or a bad twist. Hey, that, I think that's just how it is. So you know, what's a perfect example of what you just said? What? Uh, oh wait, I can't say it because then. Well, yeah, uh, sport. Uh, that's what happens in um, the Lego movie. Mm. Yes, but let's not do explicit. It is built up, and it's a great, great little twist. Yeah. Let's not spoil too much because I, I love that movie. Yeah, yeah and it's, and it just came out on DVD yes. on yeah, Blu-ray. Blu-ray. On, Blu-ray and DVD. It's out next week on Blu-ray. You can pick it up somewhere. This so, episode's so brought to you by the Lego Movie. <laughs> Logic, brother, uh-huh. Oh, we would so, we would so do it. Yeah. So twists are twists like they are like probably the most valuable tool. But valuable yes, doesn't mean they're good. It just means you don't see them often. And when you do, you take got, notice. But sometimes you don't want to wanna take notice of something that's bad. And when you do, that's ruins it. So unless we have anything else to add, I believe that brings us to a close. You just you got to think it out. That's the thing with twists. So thank you for Just joining like us. Just like every part of storytelling. <laughs> That's true, but this one specifically has a lot of weight on it. If any, this is what you need to pay the most attention to. Yeah, if you're, you're going to do a twist, it, you don't you have to do it. Do but when you do it, you got to do it good. You have yeah. to do it That's right, sad. or it kind of ruins your movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's hard to get over a bad twist. You can be, you with can either that, be Shyamalan, or you can be uh, Bioshock. No. <laughs> That twist isn't even that good, dude. Shut up. That's my favorite twist in fix. Don't even. No, sorry, no, sorry, guys. Talking I have infinite games or the mind, original? Are you talking the original? Yeah. Yeah, both aren't that great. Yeah. With that, with those shots fired, this has been CinematographerRollThirds.com. Thank you for tuning in. Next time, I think Max and I are going to be yelling at each other over Bioshock. That's that's not Bring what's going to happen. 
But yeah, again, thank you for joining us. My name is Sean. I'm Larry. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm Max. We don't I even really care anymore, so. whoever really you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been CinematalkOfRollThirst.com. Again, we have a bunch of stuff on the site, so go check it out. Thank you for joining us. I've said it like five times, so you know it's sincere. Sean, we'll see hey, you next time. Reward the Bye. listeners that stayed all the way till the end. What's next? What's coming up this Saturday? I don't know. Um, Why? Edge, edge of tomorrow, Sean. dude. Edge of tomorrow. No, Why, Sean? You forgot. Right, right, We're right. doing a review of the uh, film that just came out, Edge of Tomorrow. Yes, Yay. we are doing it tomorrow. Uh, that's this is this has been our incredibly drawn out ending. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. You always do the same thing, Max. It, it sounds weird. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.